A sealed class cannot be extended. No other classes are allowed to derive from a sealed class. So we use sealed classes whenever it just really doesn't make sense, either from an application design perspective or security perspective, to allow other classes to derive and otherwise um, manipulate or add to or extend the classes that you've created. We use the sealed keyword in the class declaration to identify the fact that this is a sealed class. Now, technically, many of the already existing classes in the .NET framework are sealed. Classes such as the string class, the stream builder class, and the console class are three examples of classes that we've already used that represent sealed classes. You cannot create your own classes that extend from those. Sealed classes can also provide some runtime optimizations, basically by not exposing resources that are not going to be used. For example, let's say that you have created a class which derives from another class. Your class, therefore, may have some virtual methods that it has inherited from its parent class. If you don't want to allow any additional subclassing from the class that you've created, and you want to make this as efficient as possible, you can mark this as a sealed class. What's nice is if you use a sealed class, then that means that the runtime doesn't have to monitor those virtual methods. It doesn't have to make those available for overwriting when it's actually publishing those, those interfaces and references within the class loader. So it actually can be more efficient when you're physically executing those classes if they are sealed. Now creating a sealed class is pretty simple. All we have to do is add the sealed keyword in the class definition. So if I had a class called my class and I wanted to mark this as a sealed class, simply use the sealed keyword before the class identifier. So an abstract class is really the conceptual opposite of a sealed class. Remember that with a sealed class, what we were trying to do is prevent that class from other being subclassed or have another class derived from it. With an abstract class, it's pretty much the other way around. An abstract class is basically defined as an abstract class if it contains one or more abstract methods. An abstract method is a method that does not have any implementation. Now please note, in order to qualify as an abstract method, it's not that it has an empty implementation, it has no implementation at all. There is no body in an abstract method. Abstract methods are implicitly virtual, however, because the only way to really use the abstract method is to provide an overriding implementation of the method, since there is no implementation found in the base class. Now, of course, you're probably wondering at this point, then, why bother use them? What's the purpose of having a method that has no implementation at all? The real advantage here with abstract classes is that it can act as a contract. If I have a class that derives from an abstract class, I know for a surety that that class that I've created, the one that derives from the abstract class, must have an implementation for those specific class methods. It's guaranteed because you must provide an overriding implementation for every abstract method that's defined within an abstract class. So that means that the derived class must either implement the abstract methods or further define them as abstract. However, if the derived class defines those methods as abstract, then that means that the derived class would then essentially be an abstract class as well. Now, the process of creating an abstract class is just throwing in the abstract keyword. We put the abstract keyword in the signature of any method which is identified as an abstract method. Look at the example here at the bottom of the slide. You'll notice that the method my method is marked as abstract. You'll also notice that there's no curly braces after my method. That's because, as an abstract method, it has no body, no implementation at all. If I were to put an open and closed curly brace after my method, then that would technically qualify as what we refer to as an empty implementation. It does nothing, but it's technically still an implementation. My method, in this case, has no implementation at all. Now, because my class contains an abstract method, then I must define that class as abstract. Now, an abstract class can have non-abstract methods. So every abstract class can have a mixture of abstract versus non-abstract methods. 
However, if you do derive from that class, you must provide that overriding implementation for every single one of the abstract methods that is defined within the abstract class. 